Interference and superposition are extremely important uh, concepts in physics. Uh, uh, together they lead to um, something we'll look at shortly, which is standing waves and interference patterns or diffraction patterns. Um, but they're really core to a huge range of principles within physics. In fact, um, the principle of superposition is fairly core to um, the, the entire of quantum physics. So these are very, very important concepts, um, despite being actually relatively straightforward. Um, so we'll start by, so here we're going to look at what the principle of superposition is and explain um, how it occurs, illustrate it, so on and so forth. So we'll start with the principle of superposition and then go on to the illustrations. So it's fairly straightforward. If we've got two waves and they're in the same place at the same time and they're the same type of wave, then they will undergo superposition. They will interfere with each other. And rather than seeing the two individual waves, what we see is the two waves added up. We add the individual displacements of all the waves. So if we've got just two, and at some particular point, we've got the peak of both of them lined up, then we will get an even larger peak at that point. If both the troughs are lined up, we'll get an even deeper trough. Um, if we've got a peak lined up with a trough, then when we add those displacements, we'll get back to zero. So if we've got a plus one displacement and a minus one displacement, what we see there is actually zero displacement rather than the two individual displacements of the wave. And this can apply to three waves, four waves, five waves, however many waves you've got of the same type in the same place at the same time. Um, so it's key that uh, this has to be the same type of wave. So water waves will interfere and superimpose with water waves, sound waves with sound waves, light waves with light waves, but we can't mix those two up. So if we have a water wave in the same place at the same time as a light wave, those two won't interact, uh, certainly not through superposition, not through interference. They might. Um, uh, so let's see what this is. Let's see the implications of this. Um, so here I've got a little diagram and uh, we've got two sides to it. So the left and the right and on each side we've got three portions of it. So on the bottom half we've got two individual waves. Uh, so on the left we've got these two on the bottom, on the right again those two on the bottom, slightly different on each side. Um, and on the top we've got what happens if we've got these two waves in the same place at the same time, what does it look like? So if we, uh, and that's what's on top. So if we start on the left hand side, then we can see that these two waves, they've got the same frequency and the same amplitude. Now to undergo superposition, you don't have to have the same frequency and amplitude, uh, but just for the sake of simplicity, in this case, uh, we're going to go with that. So some of the, uh, when we look at standing waves and when we look at diffraction patterns, those waves are interfering and superimposing and they tend to have the same amplitude and frequency. Uh, but in general, that's not required. Uh, so we can see if we look at uh, this point in space and time, then you can see we've got this peak here, this peak here, and so the principle of superposition means if these waves are in the same place at the same time, this is going to add up, so that plus that, and so we can see we get a bigger tree peak. Along here, we can see we've got a trough lined up with a trough, and so we get a deeper trough. Here we've got zero displacement lined up with zero displacement, and so we get zero displacement. Um, so these two ways are perfectly aligned. There's no phase difference between them. The peak of one lines perfectly up with the other, so on and so forth. And this gives us a larger amplitude than the individual ways. And so this we would call constructive superposition or constructive interference. On the right-hand side, we do have a phase difference. We can see the peak of one is lining up with the trough of the other and vice versa. Uh, and so the phase difference here, we can see if we were to go from uh, this point in the wave, if we were to find the equivalent point in the other wave, 
and that is a half of a wavelength. So we're uh, lambda over 2 out of phase, um, and lambda over 2 means that if we were going to do it in radians instead of a distance, then that gives us pi radians out of phase. Uh, so we're pi radians out of phase between these two. And because that means we've got a peak lined up with a trough and vice versa, if we have a look at this point, we've got a negative lined up with positive. So if we take the vector sum of those, we get zero. Here we've got the positive lined up with the negative. The vector sum gives us zero. So here, because we're pi out of phase and these two waves are the same frequency and the same wavelength, what we get is we reduce the amplitude. We've got, in fact, uh, if they're exactly the same frequency and exactly the same amplitude, we'll, we'll, we will reduce the amplitude of the uh, superimposed wave of the resultant wave to exactly zero. So uh, we call that destructive superposition or destructive interference. So this is, you can, we can see it's a very simple principle. We get two waves, same place, same time, we add them up and that gives us a new wave. Um, so let's have, a, let's have another quick illustration just to show that we don't have to have um, two waves of the same amplitude, and we don't have to have two waves of the same frequency. So I'll sketch out a similar setup. So we'll have two waves at the bottom, and we'll superimpose them onto a third line up at the top. Um, so let's have one that is quite low frequency, so a large wavelength, and quite high amplitude. So we'll take this as approximately sinusoidal, even though it's not quite perfect. Um, and along with that, we will also have one which is a much higher frequency, um, uh, but also a smaller amplitude. So we can see we've got this. It's freehand, so it's a bit coarse, but we get the idea. We've got a uh, these are both intended to be sinusoidal, so we've got high amplitude, long wavelength, short wavelength, low amplitude. And what we're going to get is, if we add these up, the resultant is going to be, at each point, because this is much larger amplitude, we're going to have this, and then we're going to add a little bit, or drop a little bit, from this line, uh, due to the small positive and negative amplitudes in this one. So what we would get is, we get the general shape of this larger long wavelength, and then we also get an extra variation in the amplitude, smaller variation in the amplitude due to the additional superposition of this higher frequency, lower amplitude wave. And so this is the sort of shape we would get if we were to superimpose these two waves. So as long as they're the, these two waves are the same type and they're in the same place, then they will interfere, they will superimpose and give us a new resultant wave um, regardless of whether they're the same amplitude or the same frequency. But when we do have the same amplitude and frequency, then we can get these special cases where we can uh, get uh, complete cancelling out, so destructive interference, and we can get the amplitude increasing, and this is the constructive interference.